Welcome to Big 4 Imperialism, including not just the NFL, but the NBA, the MLB, and the NHL. These four leagues together create what is considered to be the Big 4 Sports Leagues of the United States of America. And today, they will be colliding together to prove who is the best sports market with the Big 4 teams. In total, there are 13 United States cities that have one of each of the Big 4 teams, with two of those cities having multiple teams in each league. So yes, both New York and Los Angeles have multiple teams in each Big 4 Sports League, so this is actually going to put us up to a total of 15 total teams. Here's their introduction right now. So let's start out on the West Coast by introducing our first LA team, Team Los Angeles. Number one in this team is stacked on all cylinders. You have the Rams, you have the Lakers, the Kings, and the Dodgers. I expect this to be one of the most competitive teams, if not the most competitive, out of the 15 total teams in today's video. Next up, we have Team Los Angeles number two. In other terms, this is the little brother team of Los Angeles because, well, they have the throw me down team teams in the LA region, including the LA Chargers, the Clippers, the Ducks, and the Angels. While this team is not horrible, I'm sure the Clippers will definitely carry them the most. They definitely do not stand up next to their other big brother, Team LA number one. And let's go a couple hours north in California where we'll get to San Francisco, and this team is pretty solid too. You have the 49ers definitely leading the pack, but definitely held down by the San Jose Sharks. Yes, San Jose is basically considered San Francisco, same Bay Area. Next up, you also have the Giants and Warriors. They definitely have high ceilings, but definitely pretty low floors. And let's head 2,000 miles across the country to the East Coast to take a look at our first New York team. And if you're wondering how I put these teams together, considering there's multiple teams in both of these cities, well, basically, I did on who's a fan of what. So more than likely, if you are a Rangers fan, you probably like the Yankees, the Giants, and the Knicks. And that's why we have New York team number one, definitely the better team in NYC right here. And let's take a look at the little brother New York team, which has the New York Jets, the the Nets, the Mets, and the Islanders. Definitely throwing it off a little bit right there, the Islanders. But still, nonetheless, this team is very lukewarm, mediocre. I don't expect them to compete with the other New York team. Next stop, let's go on down to the windy city of Chicago. And really, I do not know where the ceiling sits for this team because they are definitely sitting at the floor, especially with the Chicago Bears, who were not that good last year. The Bulls, very mid-tier in the Eastern Conference. The Cubs, I mean, they might fight for the NL Central this year. And then, obviously, the Chicago Blackhawks. All they got going from them is the rookie Connor Bedard. Who knows how Chicago will play out. But I can go ahead and tell you a team that will play out pretty good will be Team Philly. Team Philadelphia has the Eagles, who were NFC champions two years ago. The 76ers with reigning MVP Joe Embiid. And then you have the Philadelphia Phillies, who have made pretty solid playoff runs the last few years. They also have Bryce Harper. And then you got the Flyers, who are probably going to make the playoffs this year, but they're an eh, average team, to be honest. But still, probably one of the best teams so far we've seen. I take that sentence right back, though, because this, this is the best team we've seen so far. Other than the Dallas Cowboys, who have playoff struggles every year, they're still a very solid team. The Dallas Mavericks have star power everywhere. Too bad they just cannot win in real life. Then you have the defending World Series champions, the Texas Rangers, and a Stanley Cup contender right now, the Dallas Stars. Team Dallas is the most stacked, more stacked than Philadelphia, more stacked than LA1. This is the best team if you ask me. Now let's completely flip the script and go to possibly the worst team in today's video. I mean, call this team a McDonald's McNugget Happy Meal because they're about to get four piece so bad. What do they have going on for them? The Commanders, I mean, they could be pretty solid, but the Wizards are the worst team in the Eastern Conference. Probably the worst team in the entire NBA if you don't count the Pistons. The Capitals, not even making the playoffs this year. And then the Washington Nationals, I don't watch enough baseball to know, but I know they're not really that good looking at this next year. Who knows? DC probably will be out first. If the year was 2010, this team would be unbeatable, but Team Boston still pretty solid because the number one team in the NBA right now is 100% the Boston Celtics. A top five team, maybe top three in the NHL, is the Boston Bruins. The Red Sox will probably be fighting for a spot, but definitely will probably lose out to like teams like the Yankees and Blue Jays. And then you have the Patriots, who are still struggling to return since Tom Brady left them. Who knows? I'm pretty sure Boston will be pretty solid. Team 305, Mr. Worldwide. Miami. We have the Miami Dolphins, Miami Heat, the Florida Panthers, and the Miami Marlins. This team is pretty explosive. I mean, the Dolphins, they scored 70 points in a game last season. The Miami Heat, they always come alive during the play-in in the postseason. 
the Florida Panthers, they made it to the Stanley Cup last year, and the Miami Marlins, well, yeah, they're the Marlins. Now to the Motor City, and if the Detroit Lions didn't pick it up this year, I would probably say this would have been the worst team, but they are the second worst team thanks to the Lions, because the Pistons, the Tigers, and the Red Wings, what a combination of teams. Man, this really just settled in how bad I feel for Detroit, man. This is horrible. Team Denver is pretty hit or miss. You have the Avalanche and the Nuggets. Both these teams have won a title in the last three to four years. And then you also have the Broncos and the Rockies. Recent struggles with both these teams. Let's just hope Denver gets selected to be NBA or NHL when they play their games. Let's head over to the Twin City region for Minnesota, more like Minneapolis. We have the Vikings, the Timberwolves, and the Wild and the Twins. I think this is actually a pretty solid team, well-rounded. The Twins, they always find a way to make the playoffs even though they lose in the first round. Same with the Wild, even though they're probably not making this year. The Timberwolves currently are like second or third in the Western Conference. And the Vikings, well, if they can find a quarterback, they'll be pretty explosive. I think they'll be pretty solid, actually. And our final team, I would say, just kind of like Denver, it's hit or miss. You have two good, two bad. The two good are the Phoenix Suns and the Arizona Diamondbacks. Both these teams have made a final appearance in the last three to four years. And then you have the Cardinals, who are pretty bad, and the Coyotes, who are especially bad. So we'll just see what happens for Team Arizona. Now, because I'm not fully used to the other sports titles like I am with Madden, player stealing and power-ups will not be included today. However, if you like this concept and this video does well, we can always run it back later with these inclusions. And every team today will have two lives, so yes, there is a possibility you will not see your favorite team play, but for some of these cities, that might be their saving grace. So let's begin with our first spin for turn number one. So beginning turn number one, I'm going to do something you guys always request to me, and that's once a team is selected, they get taken off the wheel, and once all teams have gone, we go back to having every team back on the wheel. So basically, whoever gets selected here, they won't be able to go again until everyone else goes again. Well, not even one turn into this video, and I've already made a mistake. Yes, I'm removing teams from the wheel once they go once, but I forgot to do it for like the next four or five turns. I'll go back to normal, and it'll be the case for the entire video. I'm no better than a human. Sorry for this mistake. Let's continue. And that's going to be Team Dallas. I believe they don't share any borders with any other team, so this will be an expansion somewhere. And that expansion will be barely just by pixels to Louisiana. So now we will see Dallas back on this wheel in 14 wheel spins, and we're going to Massachusetts for Team Boston. Just so you're aware, we're probably going to see quite a bit of expansions to begin with, because there's not a lot of teams today. And normally we go from the logo, which usually it's supposed to be inside the state, but we couldn't fit it. We'll just say this is actually going to get Rhode Island, because it was pointing that way. It might take a couple expansions, but it won't be too long before we start seeing some games being played. We could see one right now, with the little brother L LA team going up next. They have LA team number one to their left and Phoenix to the right. I think we might be seeing an LA versus LA matchup. I mean, most certainly, this is a dead shot for the coast. Just barely made it to Los Angeles, team number one at least. And now we get the role for what sport we're gonna play. So what sport will feature our first battle in LA? It was almost a wild card and we're starting out simple. Our true roots on this channel, it's gonna be the NFL. I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but this is the 2024 updated roster. So Justin Herbert is just throwing to some pure cashiers right now. I mean, his best best target is probably Quinston Johnston, and that dude cannot catch a cold at an elementary school birthday party. I mean, Keenan Allen, gone. Mike Williams, gone. Austin Eckler, gone. I don't know who else they got other than maybe Hayden Hurst now, and then obviously, like I said, Quinton Johnston, but there's somebody. It's Quinton Johnston himself, but there is a flag on the play. What is this going to be called? And it is going to be a face mask against the defense. Okay, it stands. That actually forced the Rams to call a timeout, so the Chargers will get the touchdown. There's a minute remaining. Can the Rams strike back? I forgot to mention that Aaron Donald did retire, so obviously he was not on the defensive side of the ball that entire drive for the Chargers, but now it's time for the Rams to log in with 50 seconds remaining. But don't you worry, because the Rams have one of the most explosive, one of the best wide receivers in the game right now. That's obviously 2-2 Atwell. Let's see if they can get it to him, and this completion, well, it's actually not a completion. It's over the head of 2-2 Atwell. It's gonna be a 4th and 17. Will the Big Brother LA team lose a life early and it's attended for 2-2 Atwell again? Does he forget that he has Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua? I guess so. That's going to cost the LA team number one their first life. So yes, the little brother LA team is walking out with the victory here. Usually when the little brother wins, it's because they tattled on their big brother to mom. Here's the win for the Chargers. So yes, considering there's two lives per each team, they're not going to be eliminated and there's not going to be any change of territory. What's going to happen is they're just going to lose one of their hearts. 
LA number one down to one life. I wouldn't panic too much if you're team LA number one because your other franchises are actually really good. But speaking of the complete opposite, we have the Detroit team. They don't share any borders, so this will be a free expansion and it's probably gonna be closer to Ohio or something. Sure enough, they do. And now they share a border with team Philly. Not a good look. And then we will have Miami. And I went ahead and gave them a free expansion to Georgia as well as moving up their main base into Georgia so they have a better chance of actually hitting a different territory. I'm sorry if the beginning of this video is kind of dull. I knew there was gonna be quite a few expansions, but there's a chance we see a game here with Arizona. Arrow's going to the right, so it's gonna be another expansion. That gives Team Phoenix an expansion in New Mexico, and now they share a border with three different teams, including Dallas, Denver, and LA number two. Tensions are rising out in the Wild West, and here is Chicago. Here's another guaranteed expansion, and would you look at that, Chicago finally owns Wisconsin. Never thought I'd say that sentence in my life. And then we go to Team DC, just barely. Our nation's capital is moving up north, and that will give them Maryland. Yes, I know our nation's nation's capital is essentially in Maryland, but I just want to put them in Virginia because it gives us some room to work with. I knew there was going to be a lot of expansions, but I did not expect this much. Maybe Detroit will finally play a game. And Team Detroit is heading towards their right. This could be going towards Philadelphia. And after like five or six expansions, we finally landed on a matchup. It's going to be Team Detroit versus Team Philly. So now what sport would these two cities be matching up again? It's going to be the NHL. Okay, this is interesting. Red Wings have been dominating the face-off circle this game so far as they have another win. They just cannot get past the goaltender. That was a close one right there, but the Red Wings still maintain possession. They push it out off the boards. Here's another shot. This one's saved once again, and the puck goes flying out of play. This goaltender has been lights out so far. I cannot remember the last time the puck escaped the Flyers' defensive zone until right now. They will finally get a much-needed clear so they can get some new skaters on the ice, but the Red Wings will take possession instantly right after. Here comes a push. It's a 1v3, though. Gotta wait for his skaters to get back with them. Here's a middle of the ice shot and a goal. That's going to be the game tire right there for the Red Wings. It's three apiece with under five minutes remaining. So we're back to even strength hockey now. The power play is now over with that Red Wings goal. But here's a goal answered right back by the Flyers. It's four to three. Just like that, that one goal lead right back in Philadelphia's favor. And now they're pushing it on the left and it's going to be controlled. Middle ice, a shot saved. Flyers take it right now. They're trying to push it out, trying to waste these last 20 seconds. This is getting intense for no reason. Empty net. That's the game. It's 5-3, to three, and Philadelphia will escape with a win over Team Detroit. I gotta say, for my first simulated NHL game, that went pretty smoothly. I hope we can see NHL quite a few more times in today's video, but Philadelphia will take control with the win, and Detroit is down to one life. Who would have thought? Though Detroit loses life number one, their only hope if they want to win a game is probably going to be the Detroit Lions. I do not see the Tigers or Pistons coming up clutch whatsoever. I'm low-key out of breath after that game. I could not imagine actually being an NHL commentator. Here's Team Denver. I have high expectations for them. If they get any arrow south, it's going to be a matchup pretty much guaranteed. I think that's going to be going towards Dallas. Though that arrow was pointing towards Dallas, it's actually going to hit New Mexico. Now under control of Team Phoenix, so it's time to spin what sport we're going to play. We've seen two of the sports today. Will we see a number three? Yes, we will. It's going to be the MLB. And actually, I'm kind of interested to see this. It's going to be the defending NL champions, the Arizona Diamondbacks versus, well, the defending I have no clue. They haven't been good in years. The Colorado Rockies. Well, this is a completely different pace of game than the NHL game I just commentated because it's a 1-0 baseball game in the bottom of the ninth. Here's a little short kicked ball into outfield. It's going to get past second baseman and it's a single on is Christian Walker for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And this is going to be a walk. Marino is going to take the first base to bring a runner the second and first and now the Colorado Rockies will bring in Justin Lawrence to hopefully close out this game 1-0. D-backs have a golden opportunity to walk this game off. A very bad pitch. They're going to advance the runners to third and second and and they're safe there, so now we for sure have runners in scoring position. All it's going to take is a single. And now a 54% chance to win for the D-backs. If Suarez can make good contact here, get a single. This game will be tied. He makes really good contact, but it's going to be fouled off. Justin Lawrence trying to fight off this 2-2 count. And that pitch will just fall short of a strike zone. It's going to be a 3-2 count. We have a full count. Could we see bases loaded with Suarez up to bat right now? That's going to be a really high ball. 
Bases are loaded with one out for the D-backs. Up is Alec Thomas. Thomas is one for three for this game. Try to make it two for four, but the pitcher takes it for a double play out at second. Safe at first, and it's tie game. Still a runner at third. One single will win this game. Pitch number 14 in the strike zone. In swinging and missing, the Rockies will survive. So now we're in extra innings with the Rockies batting. Remember that there is a runner on second base in extra innings, and they are probably going to advance over here to third base. And yes, he will be safe. 1-1 one, one count. This one is hit. Hit and good play by the first baseman. Not going to be a move at third base either. That's going to be two outs. 2-1 Two, pitching count for Joe Mantiply. And we have contact made. This one to the shortstop to end the top of the inning. And the Diamondbacks will get another chance to win the game with one single run. Carroll takes one down the middle of the strike zone again. Really good contact. And that's going to land in right field. This game is over. Walk off in the 10th inning. And of course, Corbin Carroll is the one to get it done for the Arizona Diamondbacks and Team Denver who I thought is going to be really good. The one thing holding them down is the Colorado Rockies. They're already losing a life. I think I can say this is the first big surprise in today's video because now Team Denver down the one life. They're really going to need the Avalanche and Nuggets to clutch up because for sure as hell, I know the Broncos and Rockies won't be doing anything for them anytime soon. Pretty entertaining games in all the leagues so far, but all that's left is the NBA. And speaking of the NBA, the Golden State Warriors would be a good option for Team San Francisco. But the chance of them hitting Team LA1 is kind of low because that's probably going to be an expansion. Well, this does mean that Team San Fran will expand to Nevada or Nevada, however you say it, and they will completely block block out both LA teams from having any more expansions, so that means if we land on them again, they have an automatic matchup. Next up will be Team Philadelphia once again, and there's a pretty high chance that they get matched up with somebody here as they're going up north towards New York. You know, I gotta feel a little bad here for Team New York number two, because every single team they have is worse than every single team Philadelphia has. It doesn't even matter what sport's gonna be. More than likely, Philadelphia is going to win. Well, let's just go ahead and roll and see what it's going to be. And there's the fourth sport. We've done all of them. It's going to be the NBA. So that'll leave us with the Philadelphia 76ers and the Brooklyn Nets. So after taking like 30 minutes to figure out how to simulate a 2K game, we finally have the Brooklyn Nets versus the Philadelphia 76ers. And there's a foul on Joel Embiid. It's a four-point game. This is going to put the Nets at the line, and they're going to be shooting two. Claxton's first shot. He misses it. Still a four-point game. Second shot from the line. This one, he misses as well. Those are two clutch free throws which you just have to nail and now the Nets are going to choose to foul. Payne made one of them so now it's going to be a five point game. Nets are pushing it. They're going to stay back for a three. Shoots it. Pulls it. Makes it. And that's a two point game now with a two second difference with game clock and shot clock. And now they're going to foul again. Cam Thomas dribbling this one up. He's at 18 seconds. They need a quick bucket here. They don't need to be the ones wasting time. That's for the Sixers to do. He's going to pull a three. An open three too. And a good look. And it's drilled. It's a one point game now. So now they're going to foul again, and it's going to be a one possession even if they make both free throws, but they can't even inbound the ball. Max is going to get fouled again. And Tyrese Maxey on this second shot drills both of them. A three-point will tie the game. It's going to be bounded into Thomas. Now push to Schroeder. Bridges for a three. Contested as well. Can't make it. Probably should have waited to find something a little bit more better than that. And now they send Buddy Hill to the line, which is probably going to ice this game with a Philadelphia victory. Yeah, I would just imagine that Team Philly is going to be really, really hard to beat in today's video. We just saw them win in hockey. Now we just saw them win in basketball, and they're still standing alive with both lives. You know, wouldn't be surprised if the second New York team would be the first to go. They don't really stand much of a chance against New York team number one and Philadelphia down the one life. So you've probably already noticed that I have made a mistake in this video. I did say after a team goes, I would take them off the wheel. Well, I forgot to do that for the last three turns. Obviously, I make mistakes every video because I'm no better than a human, but the good news is that I went through, watched all of it. Here are the four teams that have not been landed on at all, so every team has to go, and then once everyone goes, we reset the wheel again. So here is Minnesota? No, New York number two again, back to back. Definitely very unfortunate by the name of chance and by the name of my own mistakes have led New York number two to be in this situation. Honestly, the only chance I see them surviving is if they get matched up with New York football, the Giants versus Jets, or maybe the Islanders can beat the Flyers versus Philadelphia. Who knows? Let's see what's going to happen. The first thing to do is spin an arrow, whatever it's closest to. That might be closer to New York. I mean, bad beat of the century. It just barely goes through Pennsylvania. It's going to be a rematch against New York number two in Philadelphia again. Let's see what sport's going to be. Yeah, I'm thinking hockey is their only chance. They need hockey or the wild card. Instead, it lands on baseball. So I believe this is going to be the Phillies versus the Mets. Oh no. I mean, who would have 
thought. I thought the Phillies would walk away with this one, but currently Edwin Diaz just came out the closest game, hopefully, and the Mets are leading 6-5 to five right now in hopes to escape a loss out of the map from Philadelphia. But now it's going to be a 2-2 count, and swinging on and missing is out number one. Two more for the Mets to survive. Here's JT Romuto. JT Romuto has fired to a full count, and he makes contact to left field, but this one should be a routine play, and that is out number two with Brandon Marsh helping to be the saving grace of the Philadelphia Phillies. Last pitch was fouled off. This one is also going to be made contact, but this is a routine play by the shortstop, and New York team number two will survive against Philadelphia, knocking off one of their lives. I thought for sure they'd be clean sweeped out of the map, but no. What a way to fight for the Mets. They are keeping the second New York team alive. Well, all of a sudden, Philadelphia doesn't seem that strong anymore. They're down to one life. All right, so now you can see I removed New York team number two from the wheel, and they won't be back until everyone has gone. Sorry for that mistake. I now remember now to do it. And here is Minnesota for the first time today. They have a possibility of running into Chicago or going the other way and expanding. That probably sounds better. So that would be an expansion to South Dakota. So now remaining on the wheel, both the big brother LA and New York teams. Neither of them have been landed on yet. And we're going to be going to New York. So where will the superior New York team be going? And they're going to the right. I mean, that's about as perfect as an arrow gets if we're trying to have a New York versus Boston matchup. Because this is going from New York to Massachusetts. And now we got to find out what sport it's going to be. I think this is the one instance where I'm hoping that it's actually not football. And it is going to be hockey, okay? And this is actually going to be a really good game. It's the Boston Bruins and the New York Rangers. Both these teams are essentially tied at to the top of the Eastern Conference standings right now. Two of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. And they'll be facing off right now. Just what I expected between these two franchises. A very even contest. We're tied at two with six minutes remaining. The Bruins have a chance, but it's going to be knocked down by the defense of the New York Rangers. Now in middle ice, here's the interception as the Bruins will push it up with Van Riemsdyk. Here's a slap shot. Igor Shosturkin makes the stop, but he can't get the puck back. Adam Fox takes it, bounces it off the wall to Vincent Trocek, trying to make a deke move, but still not going to do anything right there as the Bruins take it back. Here's a four check by the New York Rangers. Not good enough. Van Riemsdyk gets the puck back, back at middle ice, and the Rangers are all over it, but the Bruins still have the possession, trying to set up a goal, and Shosturkin will stay in this one to stop the clock at 343. Trying to find a shot with 25 seconds left. Is there a lane for a one-timer? There is, but it's saved by Shesterkin. I mean, maybe with 21 seconds left, the Bruins have a chance to end this game right here, but more than likely, we will see overtime unless the Rangers get a one-timer opportunity right here, which they do, but good defense by the Bruins. Under 10 seconds, they get a chance to push it. Will they get a chance at a shot? Going in the middle of the ice, there's the shot. Knocked off a skater, and this game will be going to overtime. That looked like a penalty right there. I don't know if they're going to call it, but it's 2-2 two to two going to an extra inning of play. Now at center ice, DeBrusque is pushing it up. He's trying to find a shot, but intercepted by the Rangers, and looks like we might have a chance here if they can put on the gas breaks right here and here's a shot by Chris Kreider that fits in through the top shelf and the Rangers will win it in overtime and that will knock off a life of team Boston what a shot by Kreider definitely kind of surprising to say that the Bruins were the team that lost a life for team Boston but it just works like that now they're down to one life as well well obviously now we're only down to team Los Angeles once again sorry for messing that up but after they go now everybody has gone and the wheel resets and just looking at the map team Los Angeles Angeles number one is fighting an uphill battle. They have one life left and they're going to have to beat Team San Francisco or Team LA number two in one of these four sports. First of all, let's determine which team they're going to be playing. More than likely will be Team San Francisco as they've taken control of Nevada. Definitely closer than I originally imagined, but that does come in contact with the Las Vegas area. It's under control of San Francisco. So what sport will LA and San Francisco be playing? It's going to be the NBA, which is a matchup between the Lakers and Warriors. And this is for LA's final life. Okay, this is interesting. So if the Lakers are able to hold on to this lead, then Team LA will stay on the map. But let's see if Team San Francisco can fight back. They're currently down by one. Klay Thompson almost loses the ball, gets it back, swatted by LeBron James. And here comes the Lakers pushing up. They have a one-point lead, two minutes, going back to LeBron, and he's fouled. He's going to the line. To make it a three-point
point game, LeBron gets it to go, 116-113. All of a sudden, this is looking a little out of reach for the Warriors. They're going to need some points, but instead of foul is committed right here, a legal screen, so it's going to be an offensive foul by the Warriors, and it's almost like the Lakers are just like running away with this one. It was just a one-point game. Make it a five-point game. If a single point can be on the board for the Lakers, I think LA will escape and lose a life for Team San Francisco. LeBron has the last five points. Can he make it the last seven? Easy enough. 120 to 113. I mean, at this point, Curry's just going to have to start pulling threes. We haven't seen enough of this yet. And Curry drills it. That's what he's best at right there. 120 to 116. Maybe the Warriors aren't dead yet. They're going to need to stop right here. They still have 45 seconds, 20 seconds on game clock. Austin Reed's almost losing the ball. Gets this one to D'Lo in the corner. LeBron in the paint. Another two-point play for LeBron. And he has the last nine points for the LA Lakers. 35 seconds left. Curry pushes this one. Another three will be needed. Trying to make a move. Gets into the paint. Short shot. No good. Anthony Davis rebound. Here comes the fouls. Curry just going to have to pull another three. Let's see if he can make another one. He cannot. Rebounded by Davis. They're not going to foul. And time will expire right here. LeBron really just clutched up for the city of LA in that final two minutes. As he went on a nine point scoring run for the LA Lakers. And Team Los Angeles will survive in Southern California. Now obviously winning a game is a really good thing for Team LA number one there. But still. They still have to play San Francisco go or LA number two if they get faced up again because no territory change they're still stuck down here that's the downside of this episode but maybe they can win another one against San Francisco and so the wheel has officially been reset with all 15 teams on the wheel again once someone goes they can't go again until everyone else goes and here is team Boston the Bruins lost to the Rangers a couple turns ago and that's why they're down to one life but I think they'll take an expansion here and move on but you can't blame them though they're just playing it safe they'll take their expansion New Hampshire and they'll be off the wheel next selection will go to Team DC. Not really looking forward to what they're going to do, but I think they'll expand to North Carolina. I mean, honestly, for their case, it's probably better expanding than actually playing a game. However, this doesn't give them that much closer to Team Miami. South Carolina is the bridge gap in between. And our next selection will go to Team Chicago. More than likely another expansion as we're going down south. And I'm going to consider that going down to Missouri. Slowly but surely, our next matchup will be upon us, and here is Detroit. Arrows going to the dead left. Looks like we'll be hitching a ferry over Lake Michigan into Wisconsin under control by Team Chicago. We've seen a pretty good variety today of sports and it is going to land on Wild so that means the best team that Detroit has will play today and I think I already know who that's going to be. <laughs> I imagine you've already guessed correctly too. It's going to be the Detroit Lions so we're playing football here. It's the Lions versus the Bears in an NFC North divisional matchup. In all honesty I couldn't even tell you who's under center right now for the Chicago Bears but what's important is that they have DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and DeAndre Swift and there's DeAndre Swift running backwards, actually, for a third and eight. Once the Bears draft Caleb Williams or quarterback, I'm sure they had the potential to be pretty deadly in my videos because they stack up pretty well in offense, and DeAndre Swift is just not running the ball too good right now. He does pick up a positive game, but only for three yards. They gotta kick a field goal the two-minute warning. The real question at stake now is will the Bears be able to stop the Lions from scoring any points at all because this only makes it a one-point lead, and there's three timeouts and two minutes on the board. That catch by Sam Laporta already burned up 30 seconds, and now they're gonna have to gain a first down or more and intercepted by the Bears if they get one first down this game is over and Detroit is off the map I mean who else better to make that interception a free agent pickup from the Titans Kevin Beard I mean it just makes perfect sense all this just to lose to the Packers twice a year and DeAndre Swift finally getting the legs turning he picks up the one first down and Detroit are calling timeouts for their inevitable doom. Well, since the Bears are, well, the Bears, they actually managed the clock pretty horribly, so they're giving one final chance to Detroit Lions. Oh, who am I kidding? I mean, damn, they were not joking. You seriously cannot have anything nice in Detroit. They lost both their lives and they are the first team to be eliminated from the United States of America. I count this as a blessing from the Lord above that we did not get to see the Detroit Pistons or Detroit Tigers play today. Man, this is the worst thing to happen to Detroit since that crime that was committed there five seconds ago. Here's the Arizona team. I'm expecting a matchup here for Team Arizona, and they're going towards their East Coast, but not before it makes a dead shot for Texas. So we're going to have the Team Dallas versus Team Phoenix. If you're on Team Arizona right now, you're going to hope this is going to land on MLB or NBA because that's where they match up the best and it just barely lands 
on MLB, and this gives us a World Series rematch. I mean, look at this. You have the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Texas Rangers. These two teams just played a best of seven series last October where the Rangers took control of the World Series. Maybe the tides can be turned here with an Arizona victory. So here's the 3-2 pitch. Can he battle his way back? He can. What a strikeout by Jose Lesler, and that's going to make it two outs with Jock Peterson up to bat. One more out needed for the Rangers. Jock Peterson takes this one down Main Street, strike number one. He's 0 for 4 on this game, and he's going to swing at an outside ball. He's already on an 0-2 count. And he fight his way back, and he takes this one just inside, 1-2. Next pitch up. Peterson makes contact, but it's going to go right to the third baseman, tossed up to first, and the Rangers will hold on to the top of the ninth, and the Rangers, Team Dallas, will take away a life from Team Arizona. So now our Phoenix Arizona team might be getting a little bit of a struggle now. I mean, look at all the good teams that surround them, and they only have one life remaining. Don't mind me as I make my fourth costume change of the video, and here is Team Miami. They're still down south with not much teams around them. This arrow's going up, and that will be an expansion to the Land of the Pines as we're thumbing our way up to North Carolina. Miami now shares a border with Team DC. I'm sure they're thrilled about that one, but here's Team New York number two. They're down to one life. Little Brother New York is going kind of upright, and I believe this will result in our first New York versus New York matchup, so what sport will they be playing? The sport of choice for this matchup in New York will be football. It's going to be the Jets versus Giants. Okay. I mean, for Team New York number two, landing on football was their saving grace because they get to use the New York Jets and Aaron Rodgers, of course, back from his Achilles injury, and why do you need Aaron Rodgers when you just hand off the football like this and run up dead the middle for a touchdown? Brees Hall went right down Main Street, found the opening, and got the six points on the board, so we're going to give the ball back back to the Giants, and let's see if they can keep both lives for Team New York number one. As for the Giants, landing on football was probably the worst case scenario for them. They would much rather play any other sport because this team is lacking the offense. Daniel Jones probably would not be quarterback next year, and forgot to mention, Saquon Barkley not even on this team anymore. We did get out of bounds with that catch, but it did go backwards one yard. Daniel Jones can't even get the football off. Now we're going backwards even further. Third and 19, timeout one call. From a zone 16, Daniel Jones in some more trouble. This time he just go ahead and lose the football but he recovers it, and it's a 431. Complete dumpster fire of an offensive drive for the Giants, but what did I expect? The Jets get the ball back. Well, after the Jets tag on another Brees Hall rushing touchdown, they finish this game winning 20-6, and now the Northeast region looks really interesting. Because if you look up in this region, you can see everybody now has lost just one life. It's going to be a bloodbath for whoever comes out of this region alive. There's now only six different teams that have both lives still remaining. This is one of them, LA number two. Guaranteed matchup, no matter which way they end up going, probably going to go towards other LA teams. So we just had New York versus New York. Now it's time for Team LA versus Team LA. This is the second matchup and Team LA number one could be knocked off with an LA number two win here. And the sport of choice will be the Major League Baseball. So that means we're playing baseball between the Angels and the Dodgers. You know, in the wildest turns of events, the Infinity War Avengers are currently losing to the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Look at the Angels actually have a 3-2 lead in the bottom of the ninth. Shoei Otani Revenge Tour not going as planned right now, but maybe the Dodgers can fight their way back. Already a 1-1 count. Enrique Hernandez on the fourth pitch. He swings on it. He bites the 2-2 count. Enrique Hernandez has been fighting off this full counter now. Eight pitches at bat. Takes this one inside and we have a base runner on first. On deck is Mookie Betts. He's been doing really good this season so far but we have a strikeout painting the corners and now time for Mookie Betts who's 0 for 3 in this game. First pitch to Betts and he takes a low strike. Next pitch up and he swings again 0-2. He fouled off the next one already 0-2. Takes this one outside. Betts already dealing with a 1-2 count and he strikes out two outs right now one more needed for an angels victory but here's freddie freeman who's over four in this game this is the last chance for the dodgers bats to come alive and this is a wild pitch we should have a runner in scoring position now hernandez has now made his way to second base we have a runner in scoring position for the la dodgers freeman takes a meatball down the center one two count this could be the final pitch freeman makes contact and it's fielded for an out and the la angels with the biggest upset will knock off team la number one Really surprised by the result we ended up getting. I thought it would have been flipped, but Team LA, stacked as they are, 
are eliminated. I do think geography can kind of screw those teams over a little bit. They don't have anywhere else to go, and they have to play some tight games with their LA rivals. LA number one, gone. 13 teams remaining. We just witnessed the LA Dodgers lose to the great power of friendship, and here is Team Philadelphia. Our arrow spin will tell us that we're going down south, and now we will finally get to see what our nation's capital is made of. Its sport will be the NBA. You know, maybe if our nation's capital wasn't too worried about banning TikTok, they could actually win a sports game because they're now down by double digits, and it's looking like the Washington Wizards will cause the first life for Team DC. I think we all expected this, to be fair. MB just gonna body for two more points. This game is over. Final score, 123 to 109. It's kind of crazy to say that Team LA number one was eliminated before Washington even lost one life, but that's just the luck of the draw, and now DC down the one life. Only five more possibilities before we reset the wheel again. We're going to Dallas. Team Dallas still has both of their lives, and they'll be expanding up north to Oklahoma, and they'll now be sharing a border with Team Denver and Team Chicago. Now make it four more selections before we reset the wheel, and here is Team Minnesota. Minnesota. Could we finally see a matchup between Team Minnesota and Chicago? I think so. So yes, this arrow does feed into Wisconsin, so now I get to figure out which sport we're going to play. In which the sport we'll be playing will be a wild card. Okay, what's the best team in Minnesota? The best team is clearly the Minnesota Timberwolves, so this will be the Timberwolves versus Bulls back-to-back -back NBA games. Let's go. The Minnesota Timberwolves are currently the third team in the Western Conference behind the Nuggets and the Thunder. And right now, they have a three-point lead over the Bulls, but not unless this shot is drilled. Sure enough, 106, 106, Zach Levine with the three, and we're down to a minute and 40. The Timberwolves are pretty solid, including Anthony Edwards trying to drive in the paint, but he ends up stepping out of bounds. Now the Bulls will get the ball back, and here's DeRozan pushing the court. He is Alex Caruso to his left, trying to drive to his right, makes his way in the paint, dishes it the Caruso a three and he drills it again another three-pointer for the Bulls and that's gonna make it a 6-0 run currently in a 109-106 difference three-point lead Anthony Edwards is gonna have to take over now for the Timberwolves because nothing is coming out of their offense right now and he's gonna dribble into the paint do a little slight push off and an easy two-point shot but it does not fall and Chicago takes a rebound Levine pushing the court dishes out the Kobe White and he's gonna stay at the top of the arch of the three-point Trying to drill some time, but not unless they pull another three, and they are greening everything right now. Levine, another three, and nine straight points for the Bulls, and the Timberwolves are flat on their feet right now. They need six points in one minute, and their offense is producing absolutely nothing. Anthony Edwards gets in the paint, probably need to give up this ball. He's not going to find anything there. Gets this one to go bare, and he's going to dribble out. They're wasting a lot of time right now. Good look right here to Chris Connolly. Can't get it to go, and it's rebounded by the Bulls. I'm sure any points would win this game for the Bulls. In the corner, in the paint, DeRozan pump fakes, goes back out. Short shot, off the glass, rebounded by the Timberwolves. This is their final chance right here. 30 seconds left. We need a quick three-point shot. Anthony Edwards guarded by Alex Caruso, trying to get his way into the paint. Heavily contested. McDaniels at the arch. Has to pull this soon. 10 seconds of the shot clock. Dribbles in. Going for a two-point shot. It's good. Makes it a four-point game. They're going to have to foul. I mean, unless Minnesota just drains a really quick three right here. Edwards at the top of the arch. Drills in. Maybe they can get a two-point. Unless he wings it out like this. And it's out. And Gobert gets the rebound. It's a three-point game. They're going to foul again. Minnesota just came up with a flat tire in offense. They just let too many threes get past them. And the Bulls will close out on a four-point victory. 117-113. to And this will result in the first life loss from Indianapolis. I'm kind of surprised to see Chicago still holding on to both of theirs. Three teams remaining on the wheel and we will pick up with Team Denver. If we get an error that goes anywhere up north like we did, that's an expansion. This was a direct trajectory to the state of Nebraska, so now they'll share a border with Team Minnesota. Final two spin possibilities before we reset. Team New York and Team San Francisco. Here's Team New York. Could they be taking on their little brother New York team or will they be going the complete opposite direction? Well, it looks like New York will dodge playing another matchup, but now they're going to share a more heftier border with the Boston team. And this will leave us with our final team before resetting, Team San Francisco. They will be heading towards probably the expansion. Yes, it's an expansion to Utah. Well, we got all those expansions out of the way. Now our wheel resets back to the 13 remaining teams where we will pick up with Team 
Philadelphia. No, Chicago. That was close. I'm gonna give a bold assumption and say this will be another expansion. Yes, it will be as it's going down to Arkansas, and weirdly enough, Chicago has a high chance of playing Team Dallas. Next to go will be, well, there they are, Team Dallas. I swear, if I end up speaking this matchup into existence, good, we're going the complete opposite direction. So yeah, we're heading to Phoenix, and this is a must-win game for Team Arizona. What will be the sport played between these two games? Oh no, it's over. It is so over. <laughs> I know people who probably watch NHL my channel is probably a very small number, so just for context, the Arizona Cardinals are really bad, and they don't even have a home stadium. They've been playing in Arizona State Stadium for like the past year already. This is going to be a beatdown. I mean, I was expecting the Coyotes to be the liability for Team Phoenix, but they're holding on strong right now. If they can beat the Stars, then they would take down Team Dallas to one single life. Only eight minutes left in this first overtime period, and looks like we're going to have a delayed penalty. Who's it going to be on? It's going to be a tripping minor on the Coyotes, and the Stars will be going on a five-on-four power play in overtime. This is the best chance for the Stars to win it right here. They're moving the puck pretty good already, but a solid save, and that's going to stop the clock. Star only have 30 seconds left in this power play. Good shot. One timer off the rebound off the pads of the goaltender and Team Arizona will be eliminated by Team Dallas in an overtime NHL hockey game. Probably the worst thing the goaltender could have done there is let this happen, have a rebound shot, and that's going to end this game 2-1. to one. And like I probably said in the intro, the Coyotes were a liability for this team, also the Cardinals. Thankfully, we didn't get to see them play, but it looks like Team Dallas is hungry for westward expansion as they're now going to share a border with Team LA and Team San. Francisco. Well, there's been 16 lives taken off the board, which means we have 16 remaining. We're halfway through this video and we'll pick up with Team Boston. The most possible outcome for Team Boston is they'll take on Team New York. And I still can't fit their logo in this tiny piece of land, but going from the center of Massachusetts where they started, this hits Vermont and we have a matchup between Team New York and Team Boston both down to one life. These are two heavy hitters and only one will remain standing. Boston fans are only praying this lands on NBA, but instead it's going to land on MLB, a baseball matchup between the Yankees and the Red Sox, classic rivalry. So yes, two classic franchises between the Yankees and the Red Sox. Only one will remain standing. Let's head over to Yankee Stadium. And 3-2 count, and that's the walk that we've been waiting to see. Bases loaded in the 11th. No excuse for the Red Sox not to bring in a run here, but Connor Wong goes down on three strikes, and we have out number one. So here's Jaron Duran up next. Can he get out number two? And he will not. This is going to fall for a base hit, and the Red Sox will take a lead. Can they make it two? They will. Five to three in the top of the 11th. Can Rafael Devers add on to this lead? He hits this one to left field. We'll be seeing another run score. It should at least be six to three for the Red Sox. Runner is also safe on third. Rafael Devers makes it six to three and it looks like this inning for the Red Sox is finally going to end here but not until they took a three run lead Yankees have three outs to try to tie it hold up a second we got a base hit by the Yankees and now we're gonna have a runner on third base and first base Alex Verdugo made contact and we have a hit Kenley Jansen's been a solid closer for quite some time but if he gives up a home run or a hit like this this game could easily be tied one run scores I expect another soon should be six to five Yankees going home and he should be safe Anthony Volpe with a hit but six to five now and we have a runner at second I'll be referring to him as Josh because I'm not saying that last name again and here's DJ LeMayhew he's gonna ground a hit and a runner advanced to third base and DJ LeMayhew's on oh actually they're gonna tie the game at six the Yankees just tied it I didn't think they had the speed to get it but tie game I was not expecting them to actually steal from third there but Aaron Judge could win the game for the Yankees Winkowski and Judge makes contact but this is gonna be out number two and are they going to send the run to the second base? They will not. Can Juan Soto bring in one more run for the Yankees or the Red Sox be getting this one back? And we're tied at six going to the top of the 12th. Von Grissom makes contact. He's going to drill this one center field just trouting to it. And this will end the inning. Yankees left the Red Sox scoreless. They can walk off the game once again. And third pitch will be hit into center field. And we're probably going to have an advancement on the runner to the third base. Trying to bring him out at home. And the Yankees will win on a walk-off. The Yankees close out probably one of the craziest games I have simulated this entire video. And I think Juan Soto was the runner on second base. I mean, you just got to think the Red Sox should have easily won that game when they were up 6-3. to But instead, the Yankees win 7-6 to and they knock off Team Boston. 
Austin. Well, I'm gonna have a fun time editing that game. It's elapsed a total time of 40 minutes, but still a really fun game as Team New York knocks off Team Boston and another team is down. This will put us down to 11 total standing teams. Yeah, I just yapped up a storm on that last turn, but here is Team San Francisco. Team San Francisco will be going down south, and that's direct contact with Team LA number two. What sport will we play? We will be heading to the wild card. So what's the best team for San Francisco? You would just have to think that's the defending NFC champions, the San Francisco 49ers, which means we're playing football and it's going to be the Niners visiting the LA Chargers. You know, this wasn't the outcome I was expecting considering that the 2024 Chargers receiver room are basically one drop pass from flipping burgers at my local McDonald's because currently right now the Chargers actually have a five point lead. And now third down and five, Party looks to his opposite shoulder. He gets a completion and finally they step out of bounds. Nice. 22 yards ago with just about 22 seconds. Party scans, delivers. This one's gonna just be a dump out to the flat. Picks up four. Now 15 seconds remaining. Party's gonna just lob this one up to the corner. This time, Brandon Ayuk has it and the Niners will take a lead with a touchdown. And of course, go for two just in case they can somehow get a field goal and CMC dives for it. 23-20. Well, if LA was lucky enough, they would get 40 yards on this pass by Justin Herbert. It's gonna look like it's gonna gain something and they get out of bounds. Hold up a second. This would be about a 65 yard field goal, so I do not blame the decision for the LA Chargers. It's just going to be an end zone shot. Zero's on the board, and it is way out. Justin Herbert needs to do a little less power next time. Well, San Francisco survives in that last minute touchdown by the Holy Grail, and Team LA number two will drop to one life. Definitely wasn't expecting this team to hold on the two lives for so long, but here we are. We have now reached the second latter half of this video where we will continue with Team Miami. The expectation here is to expand or play Washington. I think that's an expansion. Team Miami is playing it really slow, but nothing wrong with that, but they will come one state closer to being in contact with Team Dallas. Seven teams remaining on the wheel. We will continue with Team Denver. Denver is down to one life, and they will be heading towards their east. Well, they're going to dodge a matchup as well, but what's going to happen is they're going to solidify an even larger border with Team Chicago and Team Dallas. Still waiting on our next matchup, and that will probably happen with Team New York number two. Their two choices are Team Philly and Team New York number one. Let's see what this is closest to. And this arrow almost could have gone on both ways to land on Philadelphia and New York, but to be fair, it probably doesn't matter because both those teams overpowered Team New York number two. What sport will they be playing? And the sport we'll be playing will be hockey. So, this will be between the Islanders and the Flyers, I believe. And if I haven't already mentioned, the loser of this game is completely eliminated. So, a lot on the line for this game and really anybody can win this one. Islanders are currently putting Team New York number two on their back right now. It's a 4-3 game right now. One goal deficit for Philadelphia in the if they lose, they're gone, and the Islanders take control in the neutral zone, now pushing in the defensive end, has a slap shot, and a goal! Bo Horvat with the goal makes it 5-3 to three Islanders. And now this game is far out of reach, an empty netter just puts the icing on the cake. It's 6-3, to three, and Team New York number 2 will stun Team Philadelphia. I'm actually really surprised to see both little brother teams still living this long. New York number two and LA number two still thriving. And Philadelphia, who I thought was a big threat in this video, not the exit they wanted, and they're gonna go out a little earlier than expected. And now we'll get back to a full overview of the map as we're down to 10 sports cities remaining. Only three teams remain with all three lives, Dallas, Chicago, and Miami. One of these is not like the other. But here's Minnesota. This could very well be heading over to Chicago, and it looks like it could. I was a little skeptical that that was going to go towards Iowa, but instead it hits this little branch out part of Wisconsin, so we're going to have Minneapolis versus Chicago part two. Last time we saw these two cities, it was a battle of the NBA between the Timberwolves and the Bulls, with Chicago winning, and this time we'll be seeing a MLB battle, which should be the Cubs versus the Twins. That is really mediocre. And important to mention that Minnesota has one life, whereas Chicago has an extra lifeline. Let's see what's going to happen between the matchup and the Cubs and the Twins. Anyways, in Wrigley, already down two strikes, make it three, because that is going to end this game with a Minnesota victory in Chicago will be down to one life. And just like that, that long list of teams that still have two lives is now down to two because Chicago no longer has two lives. Well, let's see if Dallas and Miami can take advantage of still having two lives. And here is Team DC. You know, I think another expansion will be the best decision for them. Or instead, or we can have this matchup against the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, I would go ahead and start donating to the Washington's GoFundMe. They might be dead soon. The best chance of winning for them is probably baseball. And even then, it's not going to do much. And we're going to go to the NHL. You know, looking at the scoreboard, I don't know why I underrated the Capitals so much. They're definitely not a bad team. They're a wildcard team right now. But I mean, still nonetheless, on paper, the Panthers are a much better team, and Miami really has no excuse for losing this game like they did right here 
four to one, Washington actually gets a win thanks to Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals. We have so much for Miami's second life that only leaves Dallas with two lives now. And now we're down to two teams on the wheel, both New York and LA, and we will be going out west. So there's two possibilities here. What will it be closer to? And I don't know. And just as I imagined, this arrow was pretty close to hitting Arizona, but hits Nevada first. So this is LA versus San Francisco. The last time these two teams played, it was a close game between the Niners and Chargers, but now it's going to be a matchup in the NBA. And though this is the first matchup between these two teams, it's the second time the Warriors have played an LA basketball team. This time, it's going to be the Clippers. Really didn't expect this game to be as close as it is, considering the Clippers have so much offensive firepower. Here's James Harden, and he drills a three. It's a one-point game, one-point lead for the Warriors. And Curry has the ball dribbling up now, and we've reached two minutes in this game. Curry is going to pass this one to Wiggins. Wiggins will stay at the top of the arch, looking for a move by Draymond Green. Now he's going to dribble to his left, has a crossover, has space, pump fakes the shot. This one to Kuminga, back to Curry. Curry is still holding the ball. Five seconds left in the shot clock, trying to make a shot out of this. Kuminga for three, and it's out and rebounded by Harden. One point difference right now. They could take the lead with a successful basket right here. Paul George, PG-13 the top, gets a screen from P.J. Tucker, drives in, looking for a layup, contested, double teamed, out to James Harden. They'll reset. 10 seconds, 8 seconds of shot clock. James Harden, ISO on Curry, gets in the paint and makes it, and the Clippers have a one-point lead. Warriors will need a response. That's five straight points for the Clippers. Here's the response right here. Green light, and the Clippers are now down by two after that Curry three. 112, 110, a minute five remaining. Warriors are now pushing it. Clippers cannot convert the basket. Paul George missed the layup, and now we have Kuminga to Curry. Curry, short shot, and this one's up and in and out. And now, rebounded by the Clippers, 40 seconds left. George for a quick three, off. Only 28 seconds left, Curry has the ball. Warriors got the ball back. Wiggins at the three-point arch. They just need to waste as much time as possible. Eight seconds left, Wiggins, and he gets the shot off. Rebounded by the Clippers, no shot clock. This could be the final shot of regulation if they could tie it or get a three to win. And it looks like Kawhi Leonard is going to waste all the time down to one final shot. Screened by P.J. Tucker into Paul George. He has it with three seconds left. Trying to get a shot up. One second. And it's out. And L.A. number two will lose and be eliminated from the map. And San Francisco will survive. Before this video started, I was curious to see who would make it out of California. But we finally have our answer. L.A. number two eliminated. San Francisco takes over. This leaves us with nine teams remaining. Well, I think we have a common enemy remaining on the map. That's Team Dallas, of course. And now we only have one team remaining on the wheel. That's Team New York. They do have a slight chance of expanding. So let's see what happens. And that doesn't doesn't matter because we're going straight down south for Pennsylvania. We have our final New York versus New York matchup. Winner takes all the cookies and loser eliminated from the map. Very important spin for both New York teams. What sport will we be playing? And it's going to be a rematch again. Giants versus Jets. We've already seen this game once in the last time the Jets won, but this time it's for all the marbles. Jets versus Giants. Let's go. It's odd that Aaron Rodgers has gotten himself in this position twice, and you can see why he's the gunslinger, because he just slinged that one to Alan Lazard and off to the races for a touchdown. That's the second time the Jets have scored in one single play in a fourth quarter drive of this video. Alan Lazard, house call. I mean, I was just about to say the Jets are down by six points, but not anymore, because now they'll be leading by one. The question is, did they score too early? One minute remaining, Daniel Jones goes down. They're going to have to burn their first time out, third and 15. So third and 15. Jones is going to sling it out just like Rodgers did. He has a completion and timeout by the Giants. First and 10 to the 20. I really can't believe the Giants are the team that came up clutch for Team New York number one. And now there's no timeouts for the Jets. Giants kick a field goal. This game is over. For whatever reason, the Giants called their timeout with 24 seconds left. And they're still running a play. Let's hope this does not go south for them. It will not. Touchdown. Well, I mean, based on current trends, maybe we see the Jets score in one single play again. Aaron Rodgers has the time he needs to throw it deep. And he's only going to throw it about 30 yards out of bounds. The trend discontinues. Potentially the final play for Team New York number two with Aaron Rodgers. Hail Mary King. And he does not look like the Hail Mary King there. New York number two is eliminated. The Giants come up clutch and Team New York number one survives. Well, like always in imperialism, there can be only one. In this case, only one New York team. Goodbye, number two. And now only eight remain. Final day of recording, final outfit change. And now we have a wheel reset with the remaining eight teams left. And we will pick up 
with Team Denver. They share a border with four different teams right now. It's got to hit somebody, and we're going out west. And your only opportunity going out west is to play Team San Francisco. One team will be eliminated with this next game. The selected sport will be the NFL. So this is going to be the Broncos versus the Niners. So oh, no. We've seen a lot of crazy things happen today, so I'm not counting out the Broncos, but they do not have a starting quarterback right now. So this could be pretty bad, but who knows? Let's go to San Francisco. I'm not entirely understanding why the Niners are playing down to their skill level this video, but here's the Broncos only down by three points, and I just learned two seconds ago who's the starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos. It's Jared Stidham, and it is entirely possible that he can create a field goal drive right now, or maybe a little bit extra, and not if he does plays like that. He's lucky Javante Williams made eight yards of that catch. Timeout two number called. We have a slant up the middle. It's gonna pick up ten yards, get us close to field goal range, but we're under one minute. If this is how Team San Francisco is eliminated by the Denver Broncos, that would be pretty embarrassing, and there's a possibility they just need to get a touch down and it's looking like it's not gonna happen now why are we going to the flat with 20 seconds left i think we might have just witnessed the most denver broncos way to lose do they even get the snap off who am I kidding? <laughs> Just think, Team Denver could have landed on a sport like basketball or hockey had the Nuggets or Avalanche play for them, but instead, this is how they have to go down. Complete purgatory, and the Niners, Team San Francisco, they're moving on. Well, it looks like Team San Francisco's trying to go coast to coast. They're now getting close to the Midwest as they knock down Team Denver. Final seven teams remain. Lucky number seven, and here is Team Minnesota. They've only had like two options this entire video, Chicago or expanding, but this time it could be something different. It's like I lied, this is going straight for Iowa. That's another expansion. Team Minnesota dodges the matchup. We're down to six teams on the wheel. Here is Team Miami. Similar story for them. Because of their geographical location, it's either expansion or play Team DC. And I think they'll be expanding once again. And that is in fact the case. This does go to Mississippi. But now what's going to happen is they're going to share a border with Team Chicago and the real powerhouse Team Dallas. Looks like everyone is just scared to play a game right now. But maybe Team San Francisco will stay on the hot trend and maybe win another game. They're up next. Or you know what? Another expansion sounds fine to me. There's absolutely no teams in this region, but congratulations San Francisco, you as well dodge a matchup. Playing a good old classic game of stallmate right now, but now DC will be forced to go. I pray for them as always. Team DC has two options to play, and instead, I think they will be expanding. They can go and tag along West Virginia. I wonder if there's a legit chance every single team goes and we don't have a matchup and then we have to reset the wheel again. Here's New York number one. Their chances of an expansion here is pretty low, and that should be a matchup with somebody. Well, it took just long enough. This is going to be a matchup of two of the biggest cities east of the Mississippi, New York and Chicago. What league will we be joining for this game between Chicago and New York? The NBA. And I imagine this will be a pretty competitive game because these two teams are pretty neck and neck with standings, I believe. Knicks and Bulls, both mid-tier Eastern Conference teams, only one can come out alive. Well now, if they really want to survive, they're going to need a defensive stop, probably like right now. DeMar DeRozan gets in the paint like clockwork, and he has this one off the glass for a five-point lead with 54 seconds left. This could be it for New York. It's sad that it had to come down to the Knicks to end up winning it for them. And that one was off. Rebounded by the Bulls. Kobe White in the paint. And another two-point play for the Bulls will put him up seven. I mean, what a complete collapse by Team New York. I haven't seen something collapse in New York since, like, some buildings fell 20 years ago there. This game, far out of reach now. I feel like this is another instance where it really could have been any other team and they probably would have won because Team Chicago is honestly not that good, but they have been winning games, so I give them their flowers. Team New York is eliminated. And now Team Chicago has this super goofy land area which stretches all the way from Arkansas to New Hampshire. This is weird. Dallas has been dodging a matchup for quite some time now and they're still not gonna go. They're gonna go dead last out of these eight teams. Team Chicago went twice before they went once. Will Chicago have to play back-to-back -back games or will they get an expansion here? Looks like they're finally gonna pick up Indiana. I was kinda waiting for this to happen. It was kinda aggravating me that they had all this land right here and just not Indiana. Finally, Dallas, I know you've been waiting patiently. It's your turn. I believe they share a border with three different teams who will they be taking on they're going dead up north well looks like this one will go through the cornfields of nebraska under control of team san francisco and remember team dallas they have two lives still so they could lose one and still be sitting a little bit comfortable here we go to san francisco if you're rooting for san francisco you just hope that this is the nfl or the nba but instead it's going to be a wild card for team dallas and i think it would make too much sense to say that the best team in dallas is the team that won the world series last year the texas rangers which is going to be a matchup with the Rangers and the Giants. So this is not a bad matchup for San Francisco, but you are taking on the World Series champions, 
Let's see who wins this one. Giants currently have the tying and winning run on bases right now. They're going to go for a bunt, trying to advance the runners, and that was a perfectly done bunt. Now bases are loaded. They couldn't get one out of it. The Rangers are collapsing. A base hit will tie this game for the Giants. Contact is made. This one is going to be out at second. Can he turn the double play? And he will, but it will be tie game, and a runner is still on third. Patrick Bailey up next. Can he walk this one off? 2-2 count for Patrick Bailey. He swings and misses, and we're going to extras. Extra innings roll with a runner on second in the top of the 10th. Corey Seager up to bat for the Rangers, and he's going to drill this one to the pitcher. Play is made at first base, but the runner advances the third. Dumping to the top of the 10th, we have a runner on first and third base, and contact to first base. Can he make the play? It will be get there. Safe! The Rangers will take a lead. I don't know why he was just strutting to first base. He couldn't make the play himself, and it's going to cost the Rangers or the Giants a tie game. Well, once again, the Giants are down by one. They let the Rangers get a run, and could this be a home run to walk it off? It does not quite have the distance, but it's going to send the runner to third base, or will it? Yes, he will be safe, so the tying run is at third base. Estrada now at an even 2-2 count. He swings, and it's over the third baseman. Run scores at home, 2-2. Estrada bats in the run, and he will stay at first, and the Giants have a chance to walk this off. Runner goes to second, and he will be out. Okay, what a way to end the inning. <laughs> Lady Tavares makes contact on third baseline, and it's going to be a fair ball. The Rangers will take back the lead in the top of the 11th, and I'm sure this will be an RBI double for Lady Tavares. And this should be the final out of the top of the inning. There it is. Once again, the Giants are down by one. <laughs> Austin Slater up to bat. Down the middle. This one should tie the game. Will they send another runner? They should stay at three, but bases should be loaded for the Giants with two outs. Golden opportunity to win the game here, though. That's if you're a Rangers fan and he's going to swing on this one and this one's going to land in right field. No doubt about it. The Giants walk it off and will take off the first life of Team Dallas. What a win for San Francisco. Well, all of a sudden, the big bad wolf team, Team Dallas, does not seem that scary anymore. Everybody's on an equal playing field. Everybody has one life. Every man for themselves starting now. And we've also had a wheel reset with the six remaining teams, and Team DC is up next. The big, bad, scary Chicago's up there north, but instead, they're gonna completely avoid them and go south. And going from their logo, that's gonna go to South Carolina, Georgia region. It's actually gonna completely miss Tennessee, and this is gonna be a matchup against Miami. But do keep in mind, the last time these two teams played, the Capitals beat the Panthers and took away one life of the Miami. Could an upset be brewing right here between DC and Miami once again? This is a really important spin to see if that's going to be the case. It's going to be a basketball game. You know, I would consider it a complete embarrassment if the Miami Heat would end up losing to the Washington Wizards, but who knows? We've seen anything. Let's just get to this game in Miami. You know, I give my strongest condolences to the city of Washington, D.C., because I really did not expect them to make the top six as another three point was drilled to cut the lead to 11 points, but who cares anymore? Team Washington made quite the run. But obviously, they were not going to win this video. Team Miami, moving on. So after I make this map change with eliminating Washington, D.C., it now puts us at five total teams. San Francisco, Dallas, Minneapolis, Chicago, and Miami. Definitely not what I was expecting. So this could very be the final wheel reset as we reach the final five teams, and here is Team Miami. Low-key, they could dodge a matchup here by getting an expansion, but actually, it's kind of crazy to say that this is actually going to hit Chicago's land considering they control Pennsylvania now. So Miami is traveling to... Chicago. And the sport that will be played between Miami and Chicago will be hockey. We're heading to the NHL. So this will be the Florida Panthers visiting the Chicago Blackhawks. Panthers are a significantly better team, but the Chicago Blackhawks are young. They can be scary. Let's see what's going to happen here. Well, just as I imagined, this actually is a pretty close game between the Blackhawks and Panthers, but the Panthers are going on a power play after this tripping call. So here's a two-minute minor for them to take the lead in overtime. Defensive faceoff is won by the Blackhawks. They're going to get it clear, but the Panthers will take right over at neutral zone. Let's see if they can push this in. Remember, it's a five on four with a power play. They get to the center ice, but the Blackhawks will take over and they'll waste some more time by clearing it the length of the ice. Well, the Panthers have accomplished nothing with this power play as there's only 22 seconds left. So this is their final push right here. Matthew Tuchunk has it. He's going to look for a pass at center ice. He has it, but it's saved. Looks like the Blackhawks are setting up a 3v2. Can they get the goal to go? And it's going to be saved. What a save. The Blackhawks are currently destroying them right now. And Connor Bedard, the rookie, gets the goal to win it for Chicago. 
and that means Team Miami is eliminated. I mean, just look on this 3v2 Blackhawks attack. You can see Bob Roski starts getting bombarded with shots. He makes a hell of a save right there. Here comes another save. He knocks this one off, but he couldn't take possession. Another save, this time with a stick, and it's going to be winged out behind the goal, and Connor Bedard hits the top shelf in the left center, and Bob Roski had no chance. That is how Chicago moves on. In a turn of shocking events, the Chicago Cinderella story continues as Miami, as what I thought was a clear-cut contender, is now gone. And now with four teams remaining, Chicago is completely dominating the East Coast, except for Kentucky and Tennessee. We don't talk about that. So Chicago has now had all four teams play for them. The only one who did not come out with a win was the Chicago Cubs, and here's Team Minnesota. This could very well be another matchup against Chicago, but instead, we're going the complete opposite direction. And with this arrow, Team Minneapolis will have to play Team San Francisco, as it's going to go through Nebraska. So San Francisco and Minnesota will be matching up in the NBA. This means we'll have the high-powered flying Minnesota Timberwolves versus the on-the-rise Golden State Warriors. This could be neck and neck. Let's see who wins and makes the top three. Well, if the Minnesota Timberwolves want to make it to the top three with Team Minneapolis, they're going to have to fight off the Warriors as it's a one-point lead and Golden State has the ball. Pushing the floor is Curry to Clay Thompson. Yes! Drill the three. It's a four-point lead with a minute and 15. Anthony Edwards highly contested by Clay Thompson, but they're going to wing it over to the right side of the court. Here's Anthony Edwards, and he gets it off the glass. Good two-point play. Timberwolves could use a defensive stop, but they're going to let Curry get in the paint. A pass to Draymond, and he gets it over Rudy Gobert, and this is a timeout call by the Timberwolves. Four-point lead for the Warriors. Anthony Edwards tries to drive in. Here's a pass through to Gobert. Off the glass. Easy two-point play. Fundamentals. And now it's 118 to 116. Warriors ball with 40 seconds. Can Minnesota force a defensive stop? That's definitely what they're going to need right now, but Curry is dribbling at the three-point arch, trying to waste as much time as possible. Ten seconds left in the shot clock. Gets in the paint. Here's Draymond and a short little dunk in and another timeout call to the Timberwolves. Minnesota's doing everything right on offense. They're just not doing everything right on defense. Chris Conley in the paint. A short two play right here. There you have it. Rudy Gobert slams it home. If they can get a defensive stop here, but well, they might actually have to foul considering shot clock and game clock is essentially even and they will foul. Second shot for a four point lead. It's good. 22 seconds remaining and they've already burned their final two timeouts so they have to get a bucket here and then foul quickly. Anthony Edwards at the top of the three point arch. We don't need a three point shot but it definitely would help as he's trying to drill and do it all by himself. Has to pass to McDaniels. He's going to pull the three out and in and they there is Draymond Green with the rebound, and this game is over. And zero's on the board, which means Team San Francisco will be moving on to the final three in today's video. Minneapolis had quite the run, but not good enough. When I after taking Minneapolis off the map, you can see here is the final three. It's San Francisco, Dallas, and Chicago. And this next spin is actually really important because it determines which team automatically clinches their way in to the final game. So who is going to play the second to last game? right here. Here's the second to last spin of today's video and it's going to be Chicago. They actually do have a chance to play anybody here so let's just see which way it's going to go. It's closer to San Francisco and so what that means is Team Dallas will be awaiting the winner of San Francisco and Chicago. They've clinched their way to the championship game so let's see what our second to last sport will be as well. And San Francisco and Chicago will be playing a game of baseball. Definitely a weird matchup for our third place game but that means it's going to be the Chicago Cubs and San Francisco Giants. I'd say these teams are probably close to the same skill level, so it could be neck and neck to see who makes the championship game. Logan Webb has pitched this entire game as he's already thrown 90 pitches, and Saya Suzuki will pop this one out for out number one until San Francisco moves on to the championship game. Here's Cody Bellinger up to bat. 2-1 count now. Cody Bellinger is going to ground this one to the shortstop. This will be out number two. Will he hit the century mark in pitches? This one will be grounded to the third baseman, and it's going to be a shutout by San Francisco, and this is how teams San Francisco makes their way to the final game with the Giants beating the Cubs. Well, it looks like Team San Francisco's prophecy was fulfilled. They really went coast to coast. Now from California to New York, essentially. And so this is what it comes down to. Team San Francisco, Team Dallas, who will be crowned the best sports city in America? And I have to say, San Francisco is pretty lucky that the worst team in the NHL has not played a game for them, the San Jose Sharks. And so we've reached the final turn, and as always in Imperialism, the final turn is always really important because it determines who's home and who's away. So what's going to be the case for today's Imperialism video? Team Dallas will be the attacking team. Now, if we look back at the map, you can see Team Dallas has no chance 
chances for expansion, which means their only opportunity is obviously to attack. They're 100% going on the road to San Francisco, and now it's time to determine the final sport being played in today's video. So here it is, the final sport in today's Big Four Imperialism video. It only makes sense. We started with football, we ended with football. After all, I am a football channel too, so, you know, that's nice. And that will leave us with a classic NFC rivalry final game. It's the Cowboys and Niners, two of the most well-respected teams in NFC. Just kidding. Anyways, these two teams paddled out to see which city will be crowned the champion. The Niners for Team San Francisco have been in a lot of close encounters today, but they're going to need to come out of this one alive as well. It's a third down and eight for Team Dallas. Dak Prescott has five protecting him, and he has another completion to outside the numbers on the right sideline. This one's under a minute in first and ten to Jake Ferguson at the 13. They call their first timeout with 46 seconds left, second and one. Prescott touchdown, and the Cowboys will now be up two points. Extra point should make this a field goal game. Mark play by CMC. He steps out of bounds. Now we're going to stay in the middle of the field between the numbers. Brandon Ayuk gets the first down at least, but the first timeout's called with 31 seconds. Now from the 38 up the middle, we have a strike. This is going to pass midfield, but they're going to be just short of field goal range, but they call a timeout with 27 seconds. So this is as far as the Niners offense could get them. There is no excuse for not making this, considering a UFL kicker just made a 64-yarder last week. Here it is from 41-yard line. It is good. We're going to overtime. Niners start with first possession in overtime. Here comes Micah Parsons. A sack to make it second and 18. That definitely hurts. Now makes it a third down and 13. If they don't get a completion here, it's going to hurt. And they had a blitz coming. And it looks like Brock Party just had to throw it in the dirt. Fourth and 13. This is a bad punt for the 49ers. So now the Cowboys take over. And if they get a field goal, they win this video. And we're starting with a really good run to get to the 50-yard line is Tony Pollard. I know this is supposed to be 2024 rosters. But for whatever reason, he's still a Cowboy. And he looks like he's going to end the game right here as he's got him into field goal range. That's pretty unfortunate that he's not in the Titans on this roster. I mean, either way, no matter what the running back was, this dude just had the easiest holes to run through. The offensive line of the Cowboys definitely saving grace right now. Looks like Dak Prescott wants to end this video with a bang, with a statement. He wants to pass for a touchdown, and he's going to go to the flat, and he has to Tony Pollard, the not-no-more Cowboy, I guess. But still, nonetheless, he walks it off for the Cowboys, and Team Dallas wins today's video. Well, I absolutely hate that Tony Pollard was the one who came up clutch in that video, but to be fair, it was looking like the Cowboys were going to control that win anyways, and now they take control of the entire United States of America. I mean, it seems like it only makes sense that Team Dallas was the team to win it. I mean, just look at all these four pro sports teams. They're just stacked on every cylinder. Cowboys, Stars, Rangers, and Mavericks. And we didn't even see the Mavericks play today. We have the World Series champions, Stanley Cup contenders, a team that chokes in the playoffs every year. Uh, actually two teams that choke in the playoffs every year, but still team Dallas They are stacked and they deserve to win today now as I always like to do here are some stats to end the video Starting with individual team victories by turn We started with the LA Chargers in turn one and we ended with the Dallas Cowboys in turn number 29 This is not the city just the individual team and you can see definitely a lot of teams came up clutch for their city Including mainly San Francisco six wins past turn 16 two Niners wins two Warriors wins and two San Francisco Giants wins But some other good teams this video in includes the Chicago Bulls. They had two wins. The 76ers, even though Philadelphia was eliminated early, they also had two wins. Now let's look at the complete opposite of that. Individual team losses by turn. These teams were the reason why their city was failed, and especially these teams about the list right now. The Wizards, Panthers, Timberwolves, and Cubs. They are the reason their city was 100% eliminated because they lost both games for their city. And you can see from turn 25 to turn 28, all four of those teams lost their second game consecutively. Now, if you watch it all the way through, you're probably wondering what the sports breakdown is about how many games we played per each league. Well, here it is right here. We played eight games in both the MLB and the NBA. We played seven games in the NFL, and we played only six games in the NHL. And finally, let's close out by looking at our standings. This is based on how they placed. So Detroit was dead last. They only lasted eight turns, and they went 0-2. LA number one surprised me a lot. They went 1-2 and lasted 11 turns. Arizona went 1-2. Boston also didn't get a win. That was also surprising to me. And here's Philadelphia, who was eliminated fifth, even though they had three wins. They had a positive win-loss ratio. Let's get into the top ten. LA number two placed above LA number one. Then you have New York number two at nine. Denver at eight, even though they had not a single win this video. New York number one finished seventh, and the big surprise to me as well, Washington, D.C. Team D.C. finished sixth overall with 25 turns lasted and a one and two record. And finally, what were the top five longest-lasting cities? in today's video. 
table, we start with Miami at 5th, Minnesota in 4th, and Chicago broke the top 3 with a 4-2 record and 28 turns lasted. San Francisco finished 2nd place, even though they had the most wins in today's video with 6-2. They really dominated, but they could not win the final game to Team Dallas, and they only won 3 games, but they finished 3-1 with 30 turns lasted. So that concludes today's Big 4 Imperialism. If you like this idea, let me know because I'll be down to do it again, and I'll include player stealing and power-ups like I normally do in Imperialism. But that being said, thank you guys for watching another Imperialism video, and I will see you guys next time.